Hi, my name is Matthew Belisario. Welcome to Epitome Training. Today we're going to be covering menus. Every Epitome system, whether it's the 1100, 1200, 2000, or 5000 series, comes with unlimited menus. Menus can be used to route incoming traffic to multiple destinations by digit dialing or by failover. Menus can be used to contain specific information such as directions, company hours, contact information, or even as a backdoor for company employees to gain access to the voicemail. Before we go any further, I just want to have a friendly give you a friendly reminder about the wiki. Go to support, search wiki. This is going to bring up the Wikipedia and you'll be able to type in menu. Go and then it will pull up all the articles pertaining to menus. If you're unfamiliar with the epitome or getting you know getting used to it, this is a great place to go to get familiar with what you're going to um, encounter when you go into the system for programming. Here, I am logged into the epitome demo system. We're going to add a menu today. Most companies will probably have an auto attendant, or at least a lot of them do. So what I'm going to do here, you hit add menu, and I'm going to create, I'm going to call this main menu. I'm going to assign it today, just 2001, you want a three or four digit unique number. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and hit save changes. And this is going to save this menu into the system. And you want to do that because then it's going to come up with this control menu prompt. Until you save it, it's not going to give you this control menu prompt. And this is going to be important here as we, we go on. So we've added in our name, we added in our number, and then we hit save. Next, the default menu prompt is what the caller is going to hear when they call in, provided this active menu prompt is set to default. Here you would have something pre-recorded such as you'll probably call it main prompt or main greeting and it'll say welcome to company X. Please listen to the following options. If you know your party's extension you may dial it. Um, for, one, for sales press 1, for tech support press 2, so on and so forth. That will probably be your default menu. But what's neat about the epitome is you can have up to five different greetings on top of that default menu. So I can have a snow day, snow day menu, or a prompt, snow day prompt for my menu. Maybe I have a holiday prompt for my menu. Um, and what I do is here in this section here, we'll have different. Um, the reason why there's nothing else here is because I have nothing else loaded into, into the active menu prompts. So when you first create this menu, the only thing that's going to be available is your default. And the default is whatever you have selected here out of the system. But when you hit control menu prompts, this is going to open up another way to copy other pre-recorded prompts into five slots for this menu. So we're just going to use, let's say comfortably numb no, ringtone here. Let's say that's actually my snow day greeting that I have recorded. I would grab that, pick where I wanted it. Let's say number one is my snow day and hit submit. What it's going to do, it's going to copy that prompt into this menu under number one. Now, if you notice, what this is going to do is allow me, now I have two different selections here. I have default and one. I can have it play number one. But where you would change this at most likely would be in your actual menu by calling into it. So my operator or perhaps the owner of the company, there's a snow day, the company shut down. I can assign a pin number and that person can call in, enter in the pin number and then pick what menu prompt they want to play. So if I right now I have only two of them loaded. Let's say I have another one I want to load out of here that I have pre-recorded for a holiday. Maybe it's it's this one. I 
select here, I go to number two, I hit submit, copy complete, this just copied that particular prompt from the system into this menu on slot number two. So now what I'm gonna have, not only default, now I've got number one and number two. You can override these as often as you want, copy whatever you want into those, but what that's gonna give you is it's gonna give you several different access to several different prompts to play from this particular menu. So this is a really neat feature. Next, failover. This, what's gonna happen is this menu has a, the prompt and it's going to, you can pick how many times you want the prompt to play and then you're gonna pick a response timeout. We'll go over this in the bottom section where the timers are at. But you'll have how many times the prompt plays, how many seconds the system's gonna wait for the person to dial, then it's gonna fail over. Another thing you can do with menus is you can use them to instantly fail over and direct calls to certain places. And we'll explain, I'll explain that a little bit after I get to this override on hold music. But first, let's look at the failover. Where do I want it to go when it fails over? Do I want it to go to a particular extension? Do I want it to go to a ring group? Here are the list of my ring groups I have programmed. Perhaps I want it to fail over to voicemail so they can leave a voicemail. The biggest thing you want to avoid is having callers get stuck and not be able to access anything, leave a voicemail or contact somebody. Everybody knows how aggravating it is to call into a company and not be able to get hold of somebody. So your failover is very important. Next is the override hold music. Do you want to override music on hold? Yes or no. The nice thing about the epitome is every extension can have its own music on hold if you want. You can load as many music on holds in, in the system, but the nice thing about it is you may not want uh, business people or, or callers coming into your business to hear uh, one of your employees' personal favorite song on their phone or something, whatever they have. But you can override that so that it always hears what you want them to hear. And another um, way this can be used is perhaps, uh, as in a, a lot of florists do this, maybe they'll run an ad, they'll have a bunch of DID numbers, they'll put a special um, a Mother's Day uh, sale, and they'll assign this particular DID in a newspaper or something like that to call in, you get a special deal or whatever. It'll run into a particular menu that you direct it to. Uh, I can have it fail over to a call group directly, I don't have any prompt playing. And I can have the override on hold music set, pick my music on hold that I want from the list that I have. Perhaps it's a Mother's Day greeting or something like that. I pick it from here, no matter where that call, when it gets routed from this menu, it's always going to hear that music on hold. So that's a pretty nice feature to have. The next place we're going to go is your menu destinations. This is very simple. Whatever number they dial on their keypad is where you're going to route them to. So let's say this is the main menu. Maybe I want dial 1 for a ring group. Maybe I want dial 1 for sales. So I dial 1. It's going to go to my ring group sales. Maybe I want dial 2 for my service department. Maybe I want dial 3. Maybe I want to have it go to an ex somebody's extension and I can pick that here and so on and so forth. You can pick from any of these, this list of options here. Another nice feature, or what a lot of people want to have, is what are called services. And what I can do here is I can pick the two, the two most popular ones are probably the forwarding gateway, which allows you to go in, call in, dial star, go in and you can forward your phone. Let's say you can't make it into work. Your boss told you to go someplace else today. You're not coming in the office like you thought you were going to. So maybe I want to forward my office phone to my cell phone. I dial star. I go in to the forwarding gateway. I forward my phone. Another thing I can use it for is for voicemail gateway. So maybe I want to be able to call in, dial pound, so I can access my voicemail. I enter my passcode. I can listen and manage all my voicemails. Fax 
if if the menu here is a fax tone, then I can I'll probably route it to a particular extension that's going to be my fax extension, whatever that would be that I have picked here. Next, the advanced settings, and here's where my timers are. So I talked a little bit earlier about the failover. Here's where you're going to determine your response timeout. It comes default as four. I think that's the minimum. Yeah, the minimum is the default value of four. So whenever the prompt plays, you're going to have four seconds in this case to dial something before it fails over. Most people will probably change this to maybe 10. So you have about 10 seconds to pick. Um, if you were going to use that menu to simply tag or direct a call straight off to the failover, you would probably just drop this down to four and it would call in, the, the caller wouldn't really notice anything, they'd hear music on hold, it would shoot them over to the group that you wanted it to go to, and it just passes right through the menu. More than likely, you're probably going to have maybe 10, 8 or 10 seconds in there to give them time to choose what they want to pick or like on, the, on, the, on the, uh, the menu. So the digit timeout is going to be, while you're entering the digits, the PBX is going to wait before it makes a decision to make the call. So after the last digit was entered here after two seconds, it's gonna think you're done. If you wanna have a little bit longer, you can make it three or four. Two is probably the average. How many times do you want your greeting to play? Once, twice, three times, that's all up to you. But after it's done playing the greeting, then you're gonna have your response time and then it's gonna fail over. Local extension dialing indicates whether you're able to dial local extensions from the menu. That's just a yes or no. Maybe you only want them to dial one through nine or one through whatever your menus are there, um, and that's all you want them to have access to. Then you can just turn that to no. If you want, if, if you want them, perhaps they already know your extension, you want them to be able to dial it, then you would just turn that to yes. The prompt padding is the time in seconds that the PBX is going to wait when entering the menu before playing the prompt. That default is two seconds. So it's, which is, the caller is never going to hear that. It's going to call in, wait two seconds, and start playing the prompt. Next, last but not least, if you want to use admin privileges to get in and change your menus from the outside, you need to turn this to yes. And then perhaps you'll have to make up an admin pin. So maybe I pick 5454 or something, whatever I want it to be. And so now when I call in from the outside, I can enter my admin pin of 5454. And then I can go in and I can choose any of these particular menu prompts that I had loaded in. So I only loaded in two, if you remember. So there's only two here to pick from or the default. You'll be able to listen to those particular prompts and pick which one you want to play. So just a brief overview. When you create the menu, put in your name, your number, hit save at the bottom. That's going to set everything up and allow you to have this control menu prompt here highlighted. Your default menu is simply what your default menu prompt is going to be. When, you, when, you, when the caller calls in, and that's going to be selected either outside when you call in the menu as an administrator, or you can pick from your list here. Now, here's where you're going to pick what, what prompts you have loaded into the system. You're going to pick which one you want and what location, and you're going to hit submit. That's going to copy, the, copy that particular prompt into that slot so that you can select it. Failover, important, that's where you want your calls to go when they fail over. Override hold music, yes or no. Um, what different hold music do you want it to play? Your selections for your callers, where they're going to dial, where they're going to route to, whether or not you want to have access to your forwarding gateway and your voicemail gateways. Your response timeout, after they hear the prompt, how many seconds they have before they can choose before it goes to the failover how many times you want your greeting to play, and then your admin, yes or no, and then your admin password. Well, I hope this gives you a little bit more insight into the epitome menus, how they work, and how they are programmed.
Thank you for watching.